Hi, welcome back to the On Track Whiteboard video series. My name's Ben Jordan, and today we're going to be covering part four of my multi part series on multi board PCB design. And what I want to talk to you today about is form, fit, and build. Again, really, what, what this comes down to is design for assembly, and we've talked about that. Uh, we've, last time we talked about um, signal and power integrity, but the, t but the episode before, episode two, we were looking at connectors and connectivity. And a big part of the decision-making process when choosing connectors for multi-board assemblies is for uh, design for assembly considerations. How do things fit together and go together? And, uh, and today we're going to dive a little bit more into that. And to do something a little different, I'll also be showing you in, inside some of the CAD software uh, that will help or potentially help uh, elevate and escalate that process. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to talk about a few other uh, considerations here. The typical traditional process for a multi-board assembly uh, design in, in the physical sense is to use MCAD combined with PCBCAD. And so you have a number of different PCB designs. You've done your, done your partitioning, you've figured out your signals and how the connectivity should be. And, then, and, and it's perfectly fine to do it this way. It does work just fine. We've been doing it this way for many years where we can take each PCB design and export a step uh, or IDF assembly from that to bring that into 3D mechanical CAD packages. And in the mechanical CAD, we are able to combine the different PCB assemblies. In this case, I might have my, my computer motherboard, I have a peripheral card and some memory modules. And we can bring those in as individual sub-assemblies. We can do alignment. We can use the MCAD features for clearance checking and collision avoidance or collision detection and find out where there are some problems. And then what we have to do is, where does that whole parent assembly go? Typically, this becomes an iterative process. So we need to take that information and insight we get from trying to bring things into a, an assembly in MCAD and use that to modify and drive changes on the PCB design side and uh, that can get iterative and a little bit time consuming because we can't just move a part here necessarily and push that back to uh, all the different PCB designs unless you have special software for connecting your MCAD and ECAD, uh, which some of you may have. But it's a lot faster and more efficient to do it entirely within the one 3D PCB design system, which I'll show you in just a moment. But some of the other issues around this, uh, talking about form, fit, and build, the design for assembly side of things, is thinking ahead, thinking into the future about how is this multi-board assembly actually going to be pieced together in the final assembly. And by way of example, um, many of you may know uh, uh, that, that like a lot of engineers out there, I'm into music and I play guitar. and. And uh, by day, I'm a marketing guy for Altium, but by night, at, at night, I'm, I'm designing and building my own guitar effects pedals and overdrive pedals and things like that. And I actually um, uh, like to design them like professional proper products. And so I ran into this exact issue with one of my designs uh, called the Screaming Dolly. And in this particular case, we have jacks on either side of a metal enclosure, we have some potentiometers poking through the top and a PCB. Now this is, I know it's not a multi-board design, but it's a good example of um, the, the DFA things that you need to consider. Uh, in this case, I have a jack on each side, both PCB mounted, and the potentiometers underneath also PCB mounted. And so the only way that this can actually be assembled is that the, the 6.35 millimeter jacks for the input and the output of the device are mounted to the enclosure first before the PCB is actually inserted. That means those jacks cannot be in your pick and place. They cannot be 
in the final PCB assembly. And uh, they have to be perfectly mounted with their through hole legs poking up to align with the holes on the PCB. And then those are selectively soldered or hand soldered uh, after the board is placed in there. And that's fine if you're doing hand assembly like I would be. But if you're going to mass production and you want to make a million of these things, that's going to get super expensive. So you need to look at how you lay things out and design them to fit physically. And a big part of that uh, comes into play with multi-board assemblies where different boards are going together. You can't be MC Escher here. So what I want to show you is uh, I'm going to move this aside. We could do something a little different today. And we'll switch over. So here I have the 3D assembly of a multi-board system and you can see it's basically a micro ITX or mini ITX form factor PC with a couple of memory modules and a peripheral card and you can see up there there's some connectors and uh, one of those is a PCIe. So uh, firstly, I want to uh, show by way of example the, the typical process of bringing in another design and then seeing, addressing some, uh, some constraints or, or enclosure related issues. So I, I see that that's a PCIe um, peripheral slot and I want to bring in another module so to do that, I'm going to switch to the multi-board schematic here and I'm going to place a module, uh, place module, this is the one, I'll just put it down here and I'll call it, um, this is going to be M4, M5. and. The project for this one is this 4 ports PCIe serial interface card. And it's already picked the PCB dock correctly. So I'm not going to worry too much about the actual um, connection management this time, just in the interest of time. But let's go to uh, design and we're going to update the assembly. And that adds the additional 3D model of that new PCB into there. And you can see that just comes in next, next to the rest of the assembly. So I have a PCIe card and my mini PC motherboard here. So what, what we need to do is align these things. So I'm going to do align plane to plane. And I'm going to pick the bottom surface actually of this um, connector which is inside there and now that's the reference and now for the destination I'm going to pick the bottom of the PCIe slot only that's flipped around uh, the opposite way so let me just rotate that and it snaps to the 90 degrees there. And now I'm going to do a further alignment, plane to plane. And I'm going to pick this edge. And in here, it's going to be that edge. And one final align plane to plane. I'm going to pick that mating surface. Oops, not that one. Let's try that one, one again. And this one here. And that effectively inserts the card right where it needs to go in the slot but you can immediately see you don't even need the collision check tool to to see that we immediately have a problem and uh, either this connector on the main board is going to have to be moved 
or we have to redesign the peripheral board or our, our whole system to accommodate this. Uh, maybe we could use a riser card and have that board mounted horizontally parallel to the motherboard, which is typically what you'd see in a compact system like this anyway. Um, so it's pretty obvious most of the time. But sometimes uh, you're dealing with, as I was in the case of my, my guitar effects pedal, an enclosure. And you can see we've also got, in this example, the base of an enclosure here and an actual collision on the memory modules. So we may need to actually relocate the, the uh, connectors for those sodium modules. But this board is fully routed already and length tuned. So we need to make that tough decision. Do we want to reroute those entire things with 400 plus connections and re-length re tune them and move that to suit a mounting bush on, the, uh, on the, the enclosure? Or do we modify the enclosure 3D model? I think in this case, that's what we would do because it's going to be a lot quicker and cheaper in our project timeline to modify the, the mechanical model of the assembly. But these, you can see quickly when you start piecing the system together, how it actually starts to reiterate and drive those design decisions about how things should fit together and what it should look like uh, and so forth. So one other thing just to point out that we can do here is, is move components around according to features on the mechanical assembly. So apart from actually just aligning things, and measuring distances and checking for collisions. Let me um, modify this part. So this is a sub-assembly here and, and uh, we may have holes in the enclosure that we need to align these connectors with, for example. So as soon as that's enabled, Okay, so now that that's um, put it into full edit mode, you can see the other assemblies are now greyed out. So we're now, now able to individually select and move or realign components on that child PCB according to what's needed by the overall assembly. So from a DFA perspective, we need to use these, I these uh, tools to iterate and get everything, get all the components to where you can actually do the final assembly right the first time and align everything and uh, it's basically co-designing the enclosure and each individual PCB and the overall assembly process um, in order to be able to have the most effective and efficient production. Thanks for joining me today. That's all I've got for you for this episode and hopefully it's really helpful. If you like it, please subscribe, share, link um, and post your comments and questions below. This is Ben Jordan again for the On Track Whiteboard video series. Join us again next time.